So now that I've uploaded and made my video live, I can see when I enter in top 10 YouTube channels dash YouTubers, how much they make. Uh, it is showing up within the search terms uh, right away under four minutes um, as number one. Uh, so it's got a few views on it already. Uh, so this was a fairly successful launch and it is showing up at the top of the search terms. Uh, so this is uh, pretty good uh, to get started on. And as you can see here, this was uh, why the keywords were very important and the thumbnail is very important uh, because you can look at this and say, okay, well, you know, this is the title and YouTube automatically indexes the title as opposed to if these keywords were within uh, the description, it might not show up right away at the top. And um, you can see that this is actually linking out to the video that I just created and there was that thumbnail that I just created. Uh, so this was um, this was the this was the results after the initial launch, and we got to look at uh, over a longer term how it's going to perform and to get a better idea of if uh, this video uh, needs to get some tweaking somewhere down the line or if this video is good as it is and it does get a lot of um, it does get a lot of views and the expected number of views. Once you do have that video up, uh, there are some additional tweaks that you can make to the video and that's under the annotations. Um, so you're able to, I'm just going to go through to my channel and I'm going to go to my video manager and I'm going to select it that way. Uh, so there actually is a couple ways that you can do your, uh, your editing and your annotations. So I like to just go to edit here and up at the top here. So you've got your info and settings. So that was what we had set. Uh, we do have the option to monetize, but we're not going to monetize right away because uh, the basically we do want to have an effective, um, I'm just changing the category here. Uh, so we do want to have an effective amount of viewers before we do try to monetize because sometimes uh, the ads might turn away people. So you don't want to take that chance on first launch until the video actually does take off. Uh, so there's enhancements as well. Uh, so these are a number of things that you can do to the video to enhance it uh, that YouTube allows you to do within their editor. Uh, and annotations is just the fourth tab right over here. Annotations can be used effectively. If, if used effectively, they can increase viewership, engagement, and subscribers. And the way that you can use them is you can use them uh, to drive viewers uh, to different content, increase community actions on your videos, as well as attract new subscribers. I always advise that you do add relevant and helpful annotations to all of your video after uploads. Uh, use the annotations. Uh, create a better user experience and to guide users to actions that you might want users to take as they watch your video. What they are is they're essentially clickable uh, text overlays that you're able to help boost engagement uh, when users are watching the videos. So you can use annotations uh, for various things such as asking questions to increase viewer engagement in the comments section, uh, getting view users to like or favorite a video. Uh, so I'm just going to add a question here, a speech bubble, and uh, this is where I'm placing it in uh, number eight on my top 10 list here. Uh, two minutes, uh, 12 seconds into the video. So I'm going to ask a question, how much do you think number one on our list makes? Uh, so this question will serve two purposes. It's going to get the users to hopefully comment, as well as uh, commenting to gain that engagement, that critical engagement on your videos. Uh, you also want people to kind of think to watch through the video. And if they're actually thinking uh, what's going on here in this video, it's a good way to kind of keep them enticed and engaged to follow through and watch the video out through to the end. So I'm going to just pop up this comment here uh, somewhere that it's not 
uh, not in the way. Uh, if you remember, there's going to be ads here at the bottom, uh, so you don't want to place it there. You don't want to use up the corners either because this is uh, for branding purposes, which we're going to talk about in other videos coming up. I have an option here to link it. Uh, so you can link it to another video. So if I had related videos, uh, let's say I was talking more about number eight here, and if I had something related content to them, I could click in a link here uh, to a related video and uh, you can open that in a new window and you can select when to start the video. Uh, so another use for annotations is if you have a longer video, if I wanted to, I've got a top 10 list here, and if I wanted to put clickable links uh, to any number of uh, any, any one of these top 10 items, I could create a kind of like a table of contents menu here where users can click through and see all the different items within uh, my top 10 list within one view. So also additionally um, another common use is to place it near the end where you've got asking people to subscribe and asking people to subscribe is actually very effective in getting more subscribers so it's actually one of the number one things you can do to get more subscribers when users watch the video uh, that you're able to um, add an annotation to quickly have users uh, be able to easily subscribe I also in the video I had included included an option here in the text here, a clickable link here to subscribe. With annotations it's a little bit easier. You don't actually have to put in any text in the in the link. So I'm just going to keep it clear. I'm going to use one of the spotlights because uh, I'm not actually adding text. I want people to just be able to click and um, be able to uh, go to the link and the thing with YouTube is it's really good that uh, they do have the option here to subscribe and you just have to enter in a username to subscribe to. So uh, if you don't have a username, if you want to find your username, uh, you go to your channel, you click your uh, channel name here and up at the top here. So this is going to be serve as your username until you get one. Now with YouTube you need 500 subscribers in order to customize this channel name. Uh, so this is not going to be customized till you get at least 500 subscribers and they send you out an email and allow you to subscribe. Uh, so we can preview the link here and the link is just going to the channel and it's going to subs sub, sub confirmation and as you can see here uh, this is actually going to be the same link that I used within my video here when I go down to the description and it's going to be the same link that I used to subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if I'm using Bitly, as I often do, uh, you can put the Bitly link in here for the subscription, or you could actually put a link in. Instead of subscribe, you would put the Bitly link uh, to get people to entice them to subscribe. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger as well. And then once it's ready, save and apply the changes. So now this is going to be effective within my video. And uh, if you have a series of videos related topics, you can also have here uh, click to watch the next video in the series. Um, you can click to watch playlists. Uh, you've got a whole bunch of options here. You can click out to your Google profile by default, channels, playlists, videos, subscribe, as well as fundraising, fundraising projects. Uh, you can also make your videos more interactive if you've got clickable areas where users can interact on your video uh, you can add those in as well uh, you can also highlight uh, .com or, or a merchandise store so if you're talking about a product and if you want to review it out uh, there's also if you're linking out to uh, social media you can have those links as well uh, generally a lot of people include them in the end so they'll include their Facebook page their Twitter handle or whatever other social uh, media that they have that they want to link to uh, so they would include those there there's also um, ability to kind of recycle older videos so if you if you are doing an updated version or if you're doing um, making of this video uh, so you can link out to that uh, and, and let users know do you want to see the making of the video click here and that can bring them to that or vice versa 
And also you can put in kind of like Easter eggs if you spotted this, uh, click here kind of thing. Uh, as well, anything that uh, being creative is great with annotations, uh, just getting more user in interaction, engagement is what the goal is, and uh, getting people to watch your video and enjoy watching your video. If there's something that's uh, been updated, so if I want to update my top 10 and um, somewhere down the line, six months down the line, I realize that there's a channel that should have been included, I can always do an annotation and add that update uh, with that new information, even maybe clicking out to a new video that I have the updated information. You're creating annotations, uh, avoid having them within this bottom section because uh, this is reserved for advertisements. Uh, also avoid having them at the very top of the frame because uh, you don't want to have them right at the top there either as well. Uh, don't keep bombarding the user with a whole bunch of annotations, uh, especially uh, annotations that come up under the same screen. You don't really want to be doing that where a user has to encounter multiple annotations uh, within one screen as well. So you want to avoid that and that's more of a point of view of a user experience. You want to make sure that the user has the best experience possible when they're viewing your video. And you also want to be careful when you're linking out of uh, your video that you're not doing it too early in your video and when you do link out if it is through within your video uh, you might want to do an opening a new page uh, so be really careful with the linking out of content because ultimately you do want your viewers to watch your video your entire video uh, and then click out at the end if if uh, the need be to click out to links you don't want users to be clicking out midway through your video because this is going to hurt your rankings. It's going to hurt your viewing time. Uh, users won't be following through your video and Google will uh, Google algorithm will pick, pick up on that. So if I've got a whole bunch of links out here after two minutes and everybody's clicking the links, well that's going to be very successful for the links but not successful for the video. And uh, as well, you want to include subscriptions. So you can actually have subscription requests and calls to action throughout the video. Uh, the best practice is usually, the safest place is usually to place them at the end because uh, you don't want them to, again, to have a disrupted viewing experience of your video. So again, at the end of the video, if you are linking out, uh, you don't necessarily have to open it in a new window, window because your video will be completed. Uh, so you don't have to open up in new, new uh, windows. Again, be creative and this is your opportunity to uh, increase engagement and add those calls to action and gain those, uh, that engagement that you want throughout your video.